welcome along to a late night techno stream this is day nine i believe of building a techno set from scratch my name is tom cosm we are at the sound design phase at the moment uh, this morning i busted out two tracks and tonight i'm pretty tired i'm not going to be as energetic as usual but i really want to get started on the other two tracks so we have eight tracks all together um, I wanted to be able to do four today and four tomorrow and when I say tracks I mean get one solid loop of all eight layers happening and playing because um, a lot of it's going to be on Friday and Saturday when I figure out all the automation figure out all the MIDI clips f figure out all the uh, external things that I need to do I just want to get a nice solid row of clips that work together um, over the next two days my deadlines are ridiculous with this it's a good opportunity to stop the ambient music track there uh, I'm not going to be doing an overview in this session because it's kind of a carry on from uh, the previous one um, I'm simply I will go through the tracks that we created before um, so we'll just uh, get all our volumes down we'll play them like this We'll try and be a little bit clever. Let's bring in the hats with a bit of a high pass. Here's our snare. Close hats. And then finally we had this chord sound. So that was one loop. Obviously uh, all the effects and stuff are gonna be over that. I'm just gonna turn the music down a little bit. How's that for levels? Can you hear my voice and can you still hear the full volume of the music? Okay, cool. Um, so that was the first track. And again, remember, we're working with just raw sounds here. We're all using synthesis. We're all using operators um, to create everything in their raw, no effects, no compression. We are using an EQ sometimes, but that's it because over uh, a course on the uh, dummy tracks, which do the little fills, which I can trigger with these buttons. So on the dummy clips, we've got a whole bunch of effects. And then of course, we've got the automator over here, which is this device, which allows us to really add specific effects to the kick bass snare, hats one, hats two, perk, synth one, and synth two. So that's the first one there. Hello everyone in chat. Again, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Fizz, XB Royale, Lex, Michael, Imbricate, Hellbent, Zach, K37, Fizz, Reese. Oh, quite a few people watching tonight. Again, I'm really, really, really tired, but I'm not going to go to sleep until I at least get some of these tracks laid down. So that was track number one. Let me just stop all those clips and move down to track number two. Um, what I need to do here is the kick, the snare, the hats, and the hats are all in drum racks. Uh, so if I just minimize these, you'll be able to see that. So I should do that anyway. Let's minimize these down. So you can see these are in drum racks, which is good because that means we can make use of the Push 2's sequencer and stuff. So the snare is also in a drum rack, like so. Good morning, Travis. How you doing? Hello, Extinguish. Welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, four of them are in drum racks, four of them are in instrument racks. The bass, the percussion, the synth, and the synth tour are in instrument racks. And what I need to do here is I need to change the chain selector across when the next track plays um which i didn't do in the previous one so i'm actually going to do that now really quickly before i play you track two so track one on the bass channel we need to open up the clip and make sure we have the bass selected 
and the chain selector is selected and we'll just make sure that stays on zero like that we need to do it for the percussion track as well so double click that go into our envelopes percussion chain selector make sure that's on zero i'm just adding a point to make sure it's definitely on zero do it for the synth track as well that's the midi control synth one chain selector very good that's zero and then over here on synth two we'll do the same thing chain selector and zero that just means that when i go down and i play these new clips down here which i'll bring the volumes down for a second that means that for the bass i need to go into the envelopes bass and change it to chain selector number one so zero is counted as a value remember and i also need to do that for the percussion might as well just get this out of the way now it's a big loop so we'll just make that one like so synth track synth one chain selector one and synth two chain selector one very good so now that means if i play this track here it should update uh all the instrument racks let's have a look i know you can't hear anything at the moment but you see that the chain selector has actually moved across to number two now so that means we can bring up the kick of this one and this is a fuktung bass here's our clap then we've got our hats close hats turn off the reverb i don't know why that's up then we got a kind of a percussive loop here which is cool and then we got this kind of thing guy coming in Very cool. And on synth 2 we have some chords. That's quite a nice one. I was quite happy with this track so far. So again, just the very raw sounds uh, that we're working with. Oh, good morning everyone in chat. There's a lot of chat messages. I'll just say hello to all of you. How you doing? And again, I'm probably not going to do as good as I did this morning when I was nice and fresh for track number three, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. I'm just going to start from complete scratch rather than copy across the kick. So we need to add a MIDI clip into this kick track here, go into our notes, and we're playing kick number three. I will do some broken beat stuff and various things like that eventually, but let's just play this now. And of course we get a sine wave. I'll turn it up a bit for you guys. I need you guys to tell me if my volume, my voice and the music is like too clashy or my voice is too loud or either or because all I can see are VU meters, one VU meter, <laughs> so it's a bit tricky for me anyway. How much did my laptop cost? Uh, it was just under 3000 Australian dollars. Are you talking to me? I hope you are. Yeah. And I mean, I could have got a MacBook, MacBook Pro, a new one for that price, but I got double the specs, touchscreen, 4K, and all that kind of carry on. So we have our sine wave. Let's open it up. Here is our operator, and we're going to make a kick track, of course. Um, what I'm going to do is transpose it down to a good level, good volume. Uh, let's look at our spreadsheet. What am I actually doing here? So I made a wee spreadsheet of what I want each track to be. This one's nickname is Paddy. Uh, so this kick drum is going to have a click. It's going to be pretty standard and it's going to have a good punch. The bass line is going to be occasionally house. So it's going to be a, it's still a techno kind of thing. But every now and then it's going to have a little bit of funk to it. Just a little bit. And so that'll be a, a long loop. Maybe 16 bars, maybe 32 bars. Uh, the snare. I don't know. We'll muck around with the snare. See what kind of weird sounds we can get. And yeah, just all the rest we'll just muck around with. I thought the percussion, we could have some kind of low bell type sounds. Anyway, this is just a rough guideline. We, we'll probably won't stick to it. So anyway, 
I'll do the old phasing check with the snare to get the click going up. So just bringing up the phase level there. Already starting to sound like a kick. What we'll do is we'll put it into dual FM mode, I guess you call it, like so. So that means I can bring the level up now of this oscillator if I turn it on. And of course I need to give that an envelope with a really short decay. And if we play with the coarse value, bring the decay even shorter. We've got a pretty good kick already. Um, turn on the pitch envelope, turn it up. Bring the decay shorter. That's too much. That's kind of cool actually. I actually accidentally went into the negatives but it sounds kind of cool. It's pretty tight, it's pretty fat. Let's just play with the envelope on the uh, carrier signal. Very good. Um, I'll give it a little bit of a filter like I like to do with some envelope. And that just means we can give it some drive. Uh, so we'll pick, let's try the OSR mode. We haven't tried that yet. I'll bring the volume down and bring the drive up back into the filter here. It's just the low pass. It's sounding pretty good. Let me just make sure this is on zero. Doesn't appear to be redlining. Maybe with the pitch envelope, I'm just gonna play with this a little bit more because that was kind of cool. I think that's the same if I just bring the transpose down. Yeah, that's really deep and subby. All right, let's go ahead and make a baseline. So what I'm gonna do is, first thing I need to do is go into the base and change the chain selector to number two. So that means it's going to be playing this, uh, this one here, which is base three. So let's close down the chain here. What's up Illustrator Designs? Nice to see you too. What's up Rita? Uh, the filter drive just, ugh, just gives it drive, gives it grunt, overdrives it. Yeah, it's some kind of, I, I, I honestly couldn't tell you the inner workings of how they deal with their drive. I just know it fattens it up and you can push it too far. Uh, just some kind of like overdrive. It drive just means pushing it more and um, as it hits the filter, it's probably going to clip or peak or do something weird. So um, with this baseline, as I said, I want to make it really long. We'll make it, we'll start with the one bar loop and we'll just get something going. So I'm sticking with G for pretty much everything in the set. Let's just add a whole bunch of G1s. And we'll go to G0 actually. So select all, shift down. Actually, I might get rid of the first two in each sequence. I want this to be quite subby, I think. Or maybe we'll give it a uh, some harmonics. I quite like that, actually. I might go into my kick track here. And we'll bring the level down a little bit. That sounded good. Back to the bass track and the operator. Um, so we've got a sub going on. What I will do is I'll again pick that dual FM mode. It does. I'm wearing, I'm wearing them so I can hear it. It's sounding good. Um, I'm going to frequency modulate the carrier with B, which is a sine wave as well. But I'm going to go coarse value negative 5. I love doing that. I love uh, modulating the carrier with 50% of its original self. You get that kind of grunt. That sounds good. And because I've got this uh, dual, I keep doing this dual FM thing. What I'll do is I'll turn this one on, but we'll make this one a, we'll make it a square three. 
We haven't really used those ones. We usually just use Square Digital. And what I'll do is I'll modulate that with a square 4 and see what happens. Maybe go up on the course value to the second harmonic. And we'll give that a level an envelope. So that kind of gives it a bit of character. I'm kind of liking that already. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this going throughout the entire 16 bars. So let me just bring my grid shape down so I can select a whole bar like so. And we'll duplicate that out all the way across. And then maybe the 16th bar, I'm just going to do like a little kind of run that makes it slightly funkier. So what I'll do is I'll select that area and just go loop selection for now, just so we can work on the funk part. And let's bring our grid size smaller again. Bum, ba -da, bum, maybe. Bum, ba -da, ba -da, up an octave. Dun, dun, dun. Get rid of you. We'll just do a jazz scale going down. Dun, dun. Maybe if we do something a little bit different here. So we'll have a nice long A sharp. Now we'll make it a C and we'll actually go into our MIDI and we'll pitch bend just that. So we'll pitch bend that all the way up. A lot of experimenting in this uh, video here or this live stream. I don't know if this is going to sound good, but let's try it. Okay, what I'm going to do is go into my oscillator and I'll change the pitch mode to maybe 12 semitones. So it's actually going to go above the note that it's reaching, but that's too much. We'll make it seven. And what I'll do is I'll, um, We richen this up a little bit. What I might do is pick the level amount here of uh, the D modulator, go into the clip, and let's just do a little sweep up here and see what happens. I think I'm going to have to use the pen tool here, so. Like that. It's okay. Let's go back to the bass. Let's make a course value four and see what happens. Bring the filter down. Give it some envelope. Okay, I think I'm just happy with that for now. Again, I'm, I'm maybe not going to fine-tune all these sounds tonight. I just want to get them down so tomorrow morning I'm ready to go and fine-tune them. We probably need a tiny little fill around the eighth bar as well. So let me just choose this area and loop it for a second. Well, you know, let me loop. Oh, I have to be in notes mode. So I'll just loop that. We'll just make it do 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 like that. Do 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 do. And then maybe just have no notes. Okay, 
Okay, that sounds good. So let's open this up again, set the loop points to one and nine and move on to the snare because that'll make things a bit more interesting. And I'm pretty happy with that with the bass. Okay, let's move ahead to the snare. So the snare is in a drum rack, so we need to be using snare three here. So back down to our MIDI clips. Let's. Um, I'm putting snares on the second and fourth beat, but I'm not going to be doing that a lot during this set because a lot, you know, a lot of uh, this techno music doesn't really have it on the second and four. You know, they put them on weird places and sometimes have them on the one, two, three, fours. But I'm putting them on the second and the four while I'm doing the design, just because it's quite easy to uh to do do you think you release all the finished tracks as an album no the whole point of this set is that every time you open it up and start it's different like that's that's the thing like it's a live set it's not an album i mean you could record yourself performing it um when it's polished this is kind of alpha version but when it's polished you know you could perform yourself and release that if you wanted to it does sound like a little bit like Psytrance, but I think when we get to the percussive bell kind of stuff, we can make it sound a bit more techno. Well, what we could do is go over to the actual kick track here and um, extend the decay out. We'll actually do it within the kick track. <laughs> Instant techno. How's that? That's side trance. That's techno. Okay, now we've extended that out. I'm going to bring the envelope back just a little bit. As long as like there's a full wall of bass and sub and there's a click going on the 4-4 beat, it's uh, techno. So anyway, back to the snare. What are we going to do with the snare? I think I'm just going to stick to a simple... Now let's try something a little bit different, okay? I'm going to use the noise looped. And there it is, there's our snare, all done. <laughs> no, uh, because it's on noise looped, it means it's pitch changeable. So I'm going to put it on fi fixed width and go down really low and get a real lo-fi type sound. Very good. What I'll do is I'll change all these to just normal subtractive mode. I'll turn on B and we'll use some real white noise. Real white noise. And we'll... Whoops, I accidentally added a harmonic, which I don't want to do. So back to noise white. We'll make the envelope very tight so there's just a click. Let's try one more white noise. Bring the level up. Open up the envelope. Let's give this one a tack. We'll make this uh, looped noise as well. And in fixed mode. Let me just solo that snare. some release we got kind of a video game kind of sounding snare here too loud it's kind of cool with the kick
think it needs more of the click at the start now. What I'll do is click on the attack mode here. Um, I'm kind of happy with that. What if we did something really crazy and we'll put the LFO on the oscillated C volume. We'll make it a square wave. We'll make it... We'll, no, no, we'll turn off re-trigger, turn it on. Put the amount up, put the rate up heaps. Well, that gives it a nice kind of click. If we made it a saw, it might sound... A saw down, it might sound a bit more like a clap. What's up, Steve, on Facebook? How you doing? We'll see, if, as I said, Reda, like all the things like reverbs, anything which is post the synthesizer is going to happen later. We just want to, we just want the raw sounds here. It's the beauty of the set. I mean, we can... So we've got all the effects sorted over on the Automator and the Dummy Clip channel. So I kind of like that square wave. Do I like the saw down or do I like the square? Let's have a listen carefully. It's a bit more gritty. Let's change it into high mode. Bring the rate down. Bring the frequency up a little bit. Maybe not. I like it where it was. Sounding pretty good. Let's uh, put a little bit of EQ on that. Uh, I might actually EQ the bass first. So let's solid the bass, open up the EQ8, close down the operator. Let's just roll off the bottom end. We'll use this one. And boost it around here on the second harmonic. Bring these guys down. We'll add one more pole. We are redlining now, so we need to reduce the gain. Bring that down a little bit. Move that over a bit. Now bring the gain back up a bit. It almost didn't need the EQ. It's a pretty good solid kick to me. I might just keep it without the EQ, so we'll keep that off. Anyway, back to the snare. You reckon definitely keep the square? Alright, we'll keep the square. I'll put it back to uh, low mode and bring it up. And because it's not a re-trigger mode, it's going to be slightly different every time. Which I kind of like. Maybe we play with the release just a little bit longer. Let's bring the filter down and give it an envelope. We'll make it an SMP. Maybe a band pass even. <laughs> Sook. Nah, remove the filter. Let's turn on the EQ8. We can get rid of the low end. Or we could use this fourth oscillator as a sine wave for the low end.
Just a little bit. Cool, I'm glad you could catch the stream quick, Silver. Again, it's very late and I'm very tired, so it's not my most energetic stream, but I'm fully enthused. Maybe bring this frequency of this operator up quite a lot. What about if we assign the LFO to the pitch of D as well? not going to do too much. Oh yeah, it does something if I drag the tail out of the decay. All right, let's let's go over here and have a look at it. So it's quite busy already. So what I'd like to do here is add a pole with a really high Q and surf around. Let's listen to the bass. Let's find something that sounds kind of in tune. And then we can bring the gain down. Bring the Q down. Pretty cool. What I'll also do is go back to the original white. Maybe give that a little bit more decay. And a little bit less level. I need to fix my mouse, man. Like, whenever I scroll down, it goes drastically down. Scrolling up's fine, but when I go down, I've got to be really careful. Yeah, it's cool. That's going to be a lot of fun to play with. I think we are just redlining a little bit, so let's just bring the gain down a little bit. Oh, it's done it heaps. Keep it there. Let's move on to the hat. So over on the hat track. Going to the bathroom means continuing on my iPad. Don't worry, I do the same thing. I take that as a compliment if you watch me when you shit. So again with the hi-hats, I'm doing just on the offbeats. Um, again, when uh, I get into actually constructing the MIDI clips a bit more, Maybe they won't be on the offbeats, I'm not sure, but let's just put this, these on now. And let's try and make a weird hi-hat similar to that crunchiness we had before. So I'm going to use the looped noise again on a fixed position and bring the frequency down quite low. Give that an envelope. Let's make these notes this long. Very good. I'm also going to pick full subtractive mode again. So we can do the same kind of trick. What if we had phasing on the white on the loop noise? Doesn't really do much. So oscillator B, we'll stick to how we did with the snare and we'll give it some noise white. Maybe with a bit of attack. Actually, what we'll do, we'll add another noise loop. Fixed mode. So I know that's all no envelope at the moment, but that's okay. What we might do is go over to the filter, bring it right down. Uh, we'll choose SMP, give it an envelope and then we'll open it up. I 
And now we need to give these an envelope. Not bad. What about if we put a sine wave here? Made it quite high. Fixed mode. Put the LFO only on the sine wave. Really fast. Turn a free trigger. It's not doing anything to the pitch. Why not? It should be. Oh, we're on, we need to be on D, sorry. Okay, I'm going to change the uh, LFO to high mode. So it's kind of FMing it again. And we'll give that a short envelope. So it's just kind of got that slight ding to it. Let's try and find something that sounds along the line of this G. We'll use the EQ because obviously we're killing a few frequencies. Maybe we can use a bit of resonance since we're using that filter. That's kind of cool by itself. Yeah, that resonance really ooh, that was too much. Because of that wetness on that attack. How would high pass sound with the snare? Um, it would sound pretty good. It would destruct everything that I've done before. I mean, that's basically what we're doing with the EQ is doing a high pass filter like this. I'm gonna make number four a shelf. And let's make two, three, and five. Again, ridiculous amount of Q for two, three, and we've done five, two. So we've got these kind of spikes here. We could try and find that metal sound. And of course we can bring the Q down a little bit. And let's drag these and move them down a little bit. Maybe bring this fourth one up a little bit. Travis says on Facebook, are there any other noise op options in Ableton besides white, such as pink or brown? No, there aren't. Um, there's just white, which is just random data and there's white looped which is a loop sample of noise which can be repitched um i'd say i mean it goes along with the whole ableton thing if you want to make brown or white or pink noise you just need noise and an eq and you can do it yourself um i don't think they thought it, i'm not speaking on their behalf but they probably didn't think that was an option if someone wants to make brown noise i guess if you really want to generate genuine brown noise from a source then that would be cool but I'm going to try moving these around a little bit more I think that's cool the snare is still clipping a bit so we'll bring the gain down and what I'm going to do with the hats is I'm going to spread them so hopefully you're on headphones and you can hear that. Let's just play with the time a little bit. So we got our short hats. Really needs to be here. I think the attack on the filter envelope is a little bit too long. So 
let's bring that down just a little bit using the arrow keys maybe just like 17 milliseconds a little bit less or we could give it a slight curve doesn't make a huge difference no I'm just going to change the filter modes it's not going to make much of a difference here What I might do is make this 5 1, bring the Q down a bit. I've got heaps selected here. I just want 5, so we'll bring the Q down a little bit. Bring the frequency. Whoa. I want to bring the gain down a little bit. There we go. Bring the Q down a bit. That rings a bit nicer. Okay, I'm happy with that for the hat. Let's just bring the gain down so it doesn't redline. Snare's still redlining. Very good. Now, hat two. What did I have on my stupid little spreadsheet here? I want it to be messy. Okay, so we want a messy hat. I'm just going to add in a whole bunch of... What are we on? Track three. So, I'm just going to put in 16th notes. Like so. I think I don't want these to be velocity. I think this wants I think I want this to be very computer sounding. So we'll open up this off oscillator. Um, let's not use loop noise, let's use normal white noise and just really bring it down, put it in trigger mode. Pretty simple. The, using the LFO though on the um looped noise pitch was a really good way of getting a mess so let's go into fix mode bring it right up let's send the lfo on for just a and again bring the rate up a lot turn off re-trigger i might make this one a saw down I might need to go into high mode and bring it down. Let's make the frequency higher. Um, Okay, instead of the pitch, we'll do it on the OSCE volume. That's nice and messy. And as we increase the time, it gets cleaner. And messier, and cleaner and messier. That's the kind of messy I was talking about. I don't think I need anything else going on here. Um, maybe if we go into the velocity mode, can I connect the LFO rate? I can connect the LFO rate and I can connect the time to the velocity. So I want the LFO rate just to be a little bit and we'll go velocity quite a lot. So now let's change the velocity of some of these notes here. Actually, let's change them all and see how that sounds um, with those two parameters mapped to the velocity. Where am I here? Sorry, I'm a little bit slow tonight. Okay, now that we have that happening, let's go back in here and change the amount of the LFO rate. I 
We probably need some slightly different velocities here. Okay. And maybe I will just add some real white noise. So we get a real click. That's cool. Let's go over to our EQ. I'm going to get rid of a lot of the low end on this. It's almost a little bit too busy that hat now, so let me just change the envelope decay a bit more here. Very fine tuning stuff here. Let's see if that sounds any better. Not bad. Let's um let's select all of these and do a velocity uh, a velocity slope upwards and just duplicate that four times. See how that sounds. I quite like that. What else do we have in here in the operator that we can play with? Time, what is tone? I never actually know what tone does. Let's go into our info view. I never actually figured that out. Operator is capable of producing timbres with very high frequencies, which can sometimes lead to art, uh, anti-aliasing artifacts. The tone controls high frequency content. All right, let's see what that does. Absolutely nothing. pitch up a lot. Tom, how would you perform live this track map to controller, let's say beat transitions? Um, tune in not tomorrow, but the next day. That's when I'm going to get into that kind of stuff. Uh, for now, we're just doing sound design. First part of the series was designing the whole shell of everything. Um, I have to repeat myself a lot here, but it's all good. I have an automated clip here. So for example, I can go over to my hats and we can give it some wet phasing and phase frequency and vocoder to wet. And because I have a touch screen, we can change the length of the loops. Clear that one because it's too mad. We've got a beat repeat chance so we can And then these ones trigger dummy things.
So you can see with the combination of all these tools that we've been building in the uh, previous episodes, it's a really live improvised type set. I'm just putting a MIDI clip for now so I can get some good sounds going on. That actually sounds really good with uh, what I did with the auto automator there. Sounds like creaking like wood or something. See, just with this automator, we've really fucked that hi-hat, which is cool. Let's do it for the snare, because it's fun. We'll go over to the snare track. So we've got a redux here. So what we can do is make the grid size smaller and bigger. We could have one like that, we've got the overdrive. For example, so that's the live as aspect of everything. Good. I'm just going to kill the bass. We'll just keep the bass and the kick. And let's move over to the percussion now. Yeah, it, it'll be well. With the automator, I can loop it from one bar up to 16 bars long. So it'll do a 16 bar loop. I also have a three bar, so I can do some polyrhythmic type stuff. But anyway, I need to I need to kick on, guys. I need to kick on. Sorry, so now we need to get into the percussion one. Um, I'm going to add a MIDI clip here. Because the percussion is in an instrument rack, let's make sure that we have the right track selected, which is 0, 1, 2. And over on my spreadsheet, what have I got for percussion? I've got bells. Um, I think by bells, I just mean like some kind of really heavily frequency modulated type shit. So I think I want the notes. We'll play the loop. Let's just solo it. I think I want something that just repeats over and over. Do, 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 do. We'll go in chromatics, why not? We don't need to keep melodic. Who needs melody? I'll keep, I'll keep it where it is at the moment on G. Let's hide down the chain. So we've got a sign. Let's just simply modu uh, modulate the sign with the sign. With an em envelope. We'll give this an envelope as well, I guess. We'll make this uh, the second harmonic. We'll make this the third harmonic. We'll make this the fourth harmonic. Very standard FM setup. And of course I can control these uh, here. So that's a very raw sound. It's very crisp. I had an envelope on this one, I have it on these ones, so I will put an envelope on them. Maybe let's make this the fifth harmonic, that might be a bit too nuts. Bring the level up. I'll keep it on four. We'll keep it nice and standard for now. Now the corpus and all that stuff, remember, comes afterwards. This has to be the raw sound, just the synthesizer and just an EQ. I might uh, detune these slightly, so fine tune them by 
slightly different values. So if we were to add some reverb, it's pretty techno. good let's fine tune this a bit more yeah it's all sine waves but they are frequency modulating each other so it's fm synthesis it's not subtractive synthesis so there this is the carrier this sine wave is changing the picture this one this is changing the picture this one this one's changing the picture this one let's try something different Let's change the waveform to a square three instead of a sine. So that's the first harmonic, which it would just be a sine. I will change the resolution, but it also has the second and the third harmonic, which is here, second and third harmonic. That could do some weird shit. Not really. I'm going to keep it as, oh, maybe a four bit sine. the bass back in. It's not still quite how I want. I think I want to add an LFO to all of them. but the LFO will give a slight attack on the envelope for it. Maybe a square. Little fuckings up. Noise. No. Square. That's a bit too much. comes a high mode basically gives us another oscillator to modulate with let's get rid of the attack and let's uh, give it some decay instead make it a sine wave Getting quite a lot of noise coming through. That's probably from that 4 bit sign. Maybe not. Let's keep on that one down, we'll bring the level up, or we'll change it to a fixed value. Let's 
give it a little pitch envelope. Okay, let's turn on the EQ here and then I'll go over to the automator and see what we can get it, get it doing. Yeah, usually I stream, I try to like cater for people when they're home from work in the States or Europe or Australia, but because I've got to play, I've got to play this set on Saturday, I'm just streaming whenever I can at the moment. Okay, so I can get rid of a lot of the low end. We'll use it four times. Reverb. It's going to be fun to play with. That's what I mean about we're just working with the raw sounds with the synthesis because we've got so much effects processing stuff that we can play with live that I don't want to add any corpuses or any compression or anything at all on the actual synthesis. And we haven't even got to the synth tracks yet. That was more of a synth track. I like that. Very good. What's up, Benjamin on Facebook? Tuning in from London, say hi to Oscar for me if you see him soon. Uh, Oscar Opio or Oscar Grouch? Those are the two famous Oscars I know. That's usually one or the other. Or I could just say hi to both. Why is that full of track? constantly playing okay I'm just gonna stop that ah grouch I will do yeah I'm seeing him very shortly I believe is actually okay let's talk about the synth track now I really want I really need to press along we've been going for an hour so the synth track here I have low donks that's kind of what we just did let's get rid of that for a sec Bring the baseline for context. And we'll add a synth. Remember, we need to go into our synth one chain selector and bring it up to three. And now let's play it. I think I think I just want it to go donk 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 like polyrhythmic. That's kind of what I had in my mind, I think. So we'll use a G2. It's currently being sent to the reverb. We'll turn that down. Let me just adjust all my filters so they're in the right place. What I'll do is I'll just loop three beats of the bar to get that polyrhythmic thing happening over and over. And let's go and have a look at this operator now. What we'll do, I'll go into this dual mode again. I think I'll use square waves here. So we'll go dual, we'll go square, and I'll just keep it uh, modulator in case I want to get a bit more grunt out of it. So obviously it needs to be an octave lower, I reckon. I want a low donk. I'm going to turn the EQ on straight away and just get rid of low frequencies. 
so we don't have any base clashes. Very good, and we will open up the operator again. This thing, there's a limiter there which shouldn't be there. Very good, let's bring the filter down, we'll make it a PRD. Give it an envelope. And I know that sounds really simple, but again, when we get into the automator, if we go into the synth one track, uh, we can do all kinds of crazy shit. Anyway, I'll clear that for now, because I just want to focus on the sound a bit. I don't want just a simple square wave. A simple square wave is boring. We could try two detuned square waves, so I'll turn on C and make that a square as well, and bring that up to 12, or negative 12. Detuned squares are pretty cool. I'm going to have to type this in, yeah. And just change the fine tuning of one. Just a little bit. And we'll take the phasing out a little bit here. And maybe this one could have an envelope. Bring the fine tune down a little bit more. And now let's uh, FM them with a sine wave. We'll do the 50% of the fundamental thing. Just a little bit. Maybe for the top one we could go up to the second harmonic. We'll give that an envelope as well. Put it on trigger mode. I think I liked that at 50% with no envelope. No, maybe an envelope. So what we can do here, again, we've got the time value. So I'm going to attach the time to the velocity and let's look at what else we can do. Um, we've got filter drive. I don't know if I want that. Let's see what it sounds like with some filter drive. We've got four different types of shapers. Let's try the 4-bit one. No, we'll try the sine. We'll try the hard. I think I like it without the drive too much. We'll give it a little bit. What else can we connect it to? FM drive. I'm not sure what FM drive does. It probably changes the FM amount for all of the um, FM connections. So let's just do some experiments with the velocities here. Let's do We'll just, we'll just select all four of these and have them go from high to low. Okay, what I'm going to do is instead of three beats long, I'm going to make it... Well, let me do six. Yep, so 1.2 bars long. And then we'll add another one over here. Uh, modifier keys moving from Mac to PC is always a 
funny thing. So now we can choose different velocities for these. So I might go down, I'll go down, up, middle, down, middle, up, down, uh, middle, down. See how that sounds. So they're just always kind of a bit different. We can go into the synth and change the uh, amount. So it's not so drastic. Let's try something else apart from the FM drive. OSC feedback? Doesn't do much. No. That's kind of cool. The filter envelope amount. Give it a bit of res. Let's make it SMP instead. So again. goes down a little bit too far so back to a modulation here we've got it on the time let's give these all a little bit of release not that this one's gonna make much difference or this one need to do it on the filter as well. We need to bring the sustain up a little bit. second half of the first bar and then the flange of time will have to go crazy beat repeat chance automator so 
So now all we have is Synth 2 to play with, which is the last one. Um, again, I'm just going to leave in the kick and the snare because it's good to work with for this. And let's look at our documents. Sorry, I'm not reading the chat. What mixes are those? These are Novation Launch Control XLs. Highly recommend them. Very much so. Do you mean to use Synth 4 for track 3? Did I make a mistake? Track 1, track 2, track 3. Thank you very much. Who said that? Michael, I appreciate it. Man, it's so good having an extra set of eyes. So let's go ahead and change that. That needs to be on number two. But that also means that I need to swap these around. Um, so what I'll do is I'll copy that. I'll paste it over these because this is just going to be a boring sine wave and that should work hopefully very good and I'll also need to thank you very much for that and synth 4 will need to replace with synth 5 which again is our starting point which is just a normal sine wave so yeah you're the man thank you you just saved me probably a lot of confusion. Okay, Synth 2, let's do that, right? So Synth 2, we'll go into our Synth 2 and we'll make sure the chain selector is on 2, like that. Remembering 0 is a value. Um, and in my spreadsheet, I had... I had chords for this one. So I don't know how well that's going to work, actually, now that we've got this like really heavy techno thing going on. But we'll give it a try. So um, I'm just going to start very simply. Let's just throw in a G minor chord and then work from there. We'll make it a G3 minor chord. It's got to be a minor chord, right? We could make it a major 7 chord. That would be a bit weird. We'll try a minor chord first. It's going to be really loud because it's three signs. So that's a minor seven. It could be a minor nine. Or we could make it a major seven. No, it has to be a minor. I think I will keep the ninth in there, but what I'll do is I will make this quite long. Let's make it uh, 16 bars long. And then every bar will just repeat the chord. And I'll change up the chord a little bit every bar. Uh, zoom out a little bit so we can select the time frame. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No, we're not doing it correctly. Let's close the grid size. So we do. It's still not doing it. One of those notes is too long. It should all be the same. Are we all good? Alright, let's just start again. I'm too tired for this shit. And then we'll just go down to the 7. This one will go up to the minor 3rd. And then this one will go back down to the 9. That's the minor third there, my apologies. I actually liked it there, I think. Maybe up to the, the C. Let's change the sine wave, the sine wave is shit. So we're on synth 3, which is good. Uh, we'll hide the chain selector. What's up, antiviral virtual machine? I am going to film my gig. I'm going to live stream it. So the whole end of the series from the concept, the very end is going to be me performing this in front of a whole bunch of people who aren't used to experimental techno music. So it could go really good or really bad, but either way, I don't care because it's been a hell of a journey. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to change this to a saw wave. That's probably going to be loud. 
Okay, now it's a sore wave, we can bring in an octave down. Maybe up to here, let's just turn on monitoring mode, so it goes. Uh, and then I'm going to repeat that. Let's repeat the whole thing. But let's take the top two notes and bring them down an octave like this. See what, see what that sounds like. That sounds good because it's 16 bars long we can actually make this build up a little bit just so every 16 bars is a bit of a progression so instead of that one there i'll repeat this one again let me just loop this area Let's go all the way up to this octave. And what I wanted to do here uh, was do a big pitch shift on that last one. So one, we'll give it about half a bar and then we'll pitch shift it all the way down like that. And let's go into our synth and make sure pitch mode is on ridiculous or at 24. Okay, we'll set the loop points out. It doesn't really sound good with what we've got at the moment. Sounds good without the bass. What I'll do is go into subtractive mode, make this another saw. Have to bring the volume down now. We'll do LFO just on oscillator B, really slow and a really small amount. So we get a phasing. I'm going to take re-trigger off so it doesn't re-trigger the LFO every time. Well look, this is house music, this is techno music. Let's find a nice balance. Okay, let's make it a spoke to see tones going down. Maybe we could uh, do that pitch bend on every bar. Maybe that would make it a bit more techno rather than house. I did just contemplate putting an, an arpeggiator on it, but then we'd get trance. Uh, okay, let's make the grid size smaller. We'll use the pen tool to make a slope like this. Let's see if we duplicate that. It would be cool. The 
those low notes are not sounding good with these signs, so I'm gonna just pick pick these and go up. We'll get a sounding techno, don't worry. That's actually the nine there. A little bit jazzy. Not really. Right, what else can we change here? Let's maybe make it a square wave instead. Let's put an envelope on the filter and have it come up, maybe. We'll make the envelope loop. Or we'll make it beat loop over maybe an half a bar. Now let's make it faster. Let's make it like 16th notes, see what happens there. kind of going the same as the synth. But not quite. Instead of using subtractor mode, let's try FM mode. So we're gonna modulate a saw with a square. Let's bring the course down on this one. We'll just use a sine wave instead of a square, it's probably better. I'll bring this one down to an octave as well. This isn't sounding how I want, but we'll get there eventually. Let's 
Let's put the EQ on because I can hear some low stuff already being annoying. Let's just make it a sign. Thing, we'll make it course one and we'll modulate it with the second harmonic. The reason, taking the resonance sound helps. Bring it all down an octave, see what happens. It's too melodic. I want chaos. too many notes so I'm gonna reset the slate here and just just put in some some G, some G's that's cool let's just have that happen every other bar the pitch doesn't quite go all the way to the bottom fast enough so see how it goes right to that point so i'm going to give it just a little bit of a grace period if you like so we do get to the octave below and i could change some of these notes I think I've mucked up the pitch here. like a low G here maybe holy fuck it's up us too so we'll just loop it for nine bars maybe and now we can grid it up a bit A square wave to do the pitch of we'll do oscillated just a now we use a sign I 
You mean on the spe- uh, stereo spectrum? I think what I might do is uh, we'll go into dual oscillator mode and I'm, I'll give it some noise. I'll make some noise in with it. Make it loop noise. Let's have a look at the EQ. Um, if we do, we could use the left and the right side of the EQ. So let's use number two to bring out some frequencies here. And on the right side, we'll do a similar thing. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. We'll give it a bit of space without using the spread knob. It's a bit too prominent. I'll need to subtract. And what I'll do on the right side is we'll add a fifth one with a shelf, cut off all the highs. I think this. No. Anyway, let's open up the automator and see what it sounds like with that. So this is the synth two track. Let's just make all these one bar for now. Clear that one. This has gone crazy. Did I change something? Maybe it's over on the dummy clips, maybe. Oh, it's because I turned up the uh, send for the short delay. But it sounded quite cool. So I'm pretty sure I've figured this out. I think this is my USB not being able to transmit enough data. So I'm just going to turn my audio off and on again. And this is something I'm going to fix tomorrow. Okay, we're back again. I've got a USB hub, which I don't think is giving it enough power. <sighs> Let's get rid of that delay. Still not quite sure about this. Let's go back to the filter loop. We've, so we've got an envelope, which is on loop mode. Maybe some pitch envelope going up. No, that's not gonna work. Maybe an octave lower. I think that'll sound good with... Hey, 
that second note doesn't really do it for me either. So let's start from let's start from scratch. So I'll keep the sound, but I'll put it in a new MIDI clip. See what we can get from it. Get, see what we can get from it. No, it's not playing anything. Because we need to put the synth two on synth. There. No, nothing. No love. Oh, I've got the cutoff open. Yeah. It's pretty techno. Let's put some automation of that course knob into the actual clip. What I'll do is I'll make the clip four bars long. I'll make the actual note four bars long. And if we go into our envelopes, now we can play with the course value. And what I'll do is I'll uh, make the grid smaller. What does it sound like at the bottom? long Maybe it doesn't have to be that loud. We'll get rid of that LFO. We'll keep it on, but we'll make it the volume of oscillator B instead. It's sounding a bit better without the reverb. That's a bit more techno. Let's even try it down an octave. Sorry, I got a little bit carried away and thought I could do a pad. That's cool. With a bit, bit more EQing if we raise it up here. That white noise is interfering a bit. White noise is looped. We can assign the LFO to the C pitch, maybe, and we'll put it on a fixed value.
think that's good, but I'd actually even like to go up the harmonic series even more. So I'll make this four bars long. Uh, yeah, which I've done. And where is the cause value? Here it is here. One, two, three. Let's just keep going up and up for a bit. And then we'll go one more. And then we'll start coming down like this. So this will need to be more than four bars. When we get to the bottom, when it's polyrhythmically correct, we'll just uh, loop it. So there, so it needs to be at that point. I think that needs to be there actually, and this needs to be here. Now let's try the looping envelope on back on six beats again. Whoa. We're getting a lot of uh, low end in that, so we'll go back to right mode. Six is a bit too much. What about just quarter beats? I quite like that. I mean, if we got rid of these guys, it could be a good addition. We don't have to have all of these playing at the same time. We can have one or the other. Maybe if we just make these all um, a low G, they might get, because I mean this is going chromatically and that's kind of like, even though the, the other things are quite pitch weird, it's still kind of, uh, they're still doing harmonic-y type stuff. This program is Ableton Live, Jonathan Whitaker, we're also using Max for Live. What is a good free one to start with? Only a computer? Uh, I suggest Ableton Live, but it's just because what I what I use. There are probably four or five big name pieces of music software out there. Um, Ableton Live have a cool new website, which is called Ableton Learn to Make Music. I don't know what the actual URL is. Get started. So it's learningmusic.ableton.com. You should be able to see it here. And uh, I won't actually do it for you here, but basically it just goes through everything and um, it's not going to be coming out of the audio because I don't have it hooked up, but you can actually learn how to write music and beats and stuff from within your web page. And uh, obviously they're going to try and sell you the software afterwards, but um, it's a good place to start. That's techno.
just have one little gripe with this. Let's make this higher. We don't have anything high. So let's make this higher. Uh, control all shift up. Now let's open up the auto machine. Let's do some playing. Obviously not what I'll be doing on the night, just putting in other two data. Okay, I am happy with that as track number three. I'm probably going to fine tune that a bit more in the morning. How long have we been streaming for? Two hours? What's the time? Oh, fuck. Um, I am going to... Okay, I'm going to have one go at track number four, but I need to give myself a three or four minute break before I get into that. Um, so if you guys are still tuning in there, which there are a few of you, which is good, um, hang in there. I will be back shortly. I am just going to powder my nose. No, wait, that sounds like I'm going to do cocaine. I'm just going to go to the toilet. But yeah, I'll be back soon.
Okay, we are back. I just spilt a whole thing of water all over my floor. That is why when I reach down to drink water, it goes back on the floor and not all over this shit. So that took me a bit longer than I should have. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, be right back, techno. Satan techno, Satan doll. Da -na -na, da -na. Um, in cloud me on YouTube, but can't you just randomize those automated parameters inside himself? Wouldn't that be like the device randomizer you started? Yes, it would be like the device randomizer I started, but the device randomizer I started, I can't finish in time because I've hit a, a, a block and it's going to take me a lot of hours and I have to have this set ready by the weekend. So this was my alternative, this machine here, which you're looking at. Um, I'm clicking with the mouse and for you guys so you can see what I'm doing, but I bought a new computer so I can just touch in points like this really quickly on my computer uh, when I'm playing live, I can clear it. Um, you know, I can draw my patterns live as I like. Um, so, and I'm actually finding this to be much more fun. I still will... What's happened with the automation generator that I'm creating is I hit a point where it was nearly finished, but it was still a little bit broken that I wasn't happy releasing it. And then I figured something else out, which is pretty huge. But... I need to talk to Ableton first before I start exploring that avenue. I won't say any more on that. I just, just, yeah, like the technique that I've come up with could be really bad. So I'm not sure, but I want to get this done before the weekend anyway. Hey, Bart, good to see you again. How you doing? Yes, but randomize it with touching. Again, in cloud, that's definitely a feature I want to have. I want to have uh, LFOs. I want to have ramps. I want to have pre-built uh, envelope shapes. I also want to have randomization features. But I just don't have time to build them for this set. So the first set's this weekend, and I need to just now work on the audio content. So there will be future versions with that in mind. But for now, we're just going to roll with what we've got. Let me just clear everything. Very good. Let's go back and play track two for some fresh ears. And number one. There could be a bit more techno, but we will get there. So track number four, let's have a look at the spreadsheet that I've got here. Well, I don't need to map any buttons because, as I said, I've got a... You can't see it, but I've got a touch screen, so I can just touch touch those and, you know, open and close it. Oh, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, I will have a button uh, mapped. For example, uh, Shift 1, like if I'm on a track over here, Shift 1 will go and open it. I can go into key mode. I could go Shift 3. And then if I was to go Shift 3... It's not going to work. Why isn't it going to work? Because I push K. Okay. So shift three and it opens. So over here, shift three and it opens. Yeah. So I've taken your suggestion. Ooh, it's chucked it there, which is interesting. I'm not sure if I like that. Okay. It's, now it's gone. Let's save the set, hey? Good idea. Uh, the whole set is going to be an hour long. Yeah, so I've got eight tracks. One track could be three minutes, one could be seven, one could be ten minutes. It all depends. I, I want it to be as improvised as absolutely possible. So I want to get track one, two, three, four finished today. I did track one and two this morning. I'm doing track three and four now. And then tomorrow i've got a day to do five six seven and eight and then i've got a day to refine and practice and then i've got a whole day of practice and then i have to perform which will be live streamed yeah it's going to be a very interesting live stream when i actually perform this 
Uh, I think it's going to be good. I really do. Okay, so let's let's jump straight ahead now. I really need to kick on. It's getting quite late in the evening here. Um, so now we're working with track number four. So kick four again. I'm just going to put in one, two, three, four. Uh, oh, look at our spreadsheet. So this one is a call and response for the kick. I've got quite a short kick, so we might just have a pop, poppy kick. Um, I put double dug and just sign. <laughs> double dug is. I don't know if you guys call it this in your country, wherever you're from, but in Australia, lots of people call types of bass lines dugs. So, yeah, I think I will stream the practice sessions. How do you pronounce your name? I apologize. I'm, I'm assuming it's uh, Mandarin or something. Is it is it Chi or Z? Um, I keep seeing XI, and all I can think about is, uh, is that a valid word in Scrabble? Chi? Z? Yeah, I'll stream the practice sessions. Doug, that's you. Yeah, so a Doug is a double Doug is a two sixteenth note bass line. So fuk dug a fuk dug a fuk. So you got double Doug, Doug Doug, fuk Doug Doug, fuk Doug Doug. You've got triple Doug, which is like side trance, fuk a Doug a fuk a Doug a. Um, and then you've got just single Doug, which is kind of you more fuk Doug, fuk Doug, fuk Doug, fuk Doug. So I put double Doug. <laughs> um, I want it to just be a nice sine wave, um, quite short, zai like tight. Cool. Sai Tao, now or no forever. That's the third time I've seen your name and I've purposely not mentioned it because I didn't want to mispronounce it, so now I know. But I'm not even sure if that's right. Okay. Well, you're Zai Tai now. Uh, for the snare, I've got weird glitch. I've got ARP. Um, I thought it might be cool to try to recreate the whole clap sound of multiple people clapping or multiple snare membranes. We've been using LFOs with uh, sword tooth downs. But I thought maybe we could introduce an ARP MIDI effect to see if we could get that instead. So we'll experiment a bit there. Hats 1. Um, I was thinking about maybe a tambourine type sound. I'm not sure if I can make that with just an operator. Um, it might has, I've got similar to clap, so maybe it's similar to the clap. We have to kind of think about the jingly bits. And there's lots of jingly bits and people hit it. Hats 2, I want an LFO on the pitch with steady velocity and noise looped. I'm not sure what I mean by that. Percussion, multi-hits, move down, long and up. I don't know. And then synth 1 and synth 2 talk to each other. So this is going to be like a call and response. Synth 1 will be like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Or that's, too, that's not techno. It'll be evil. And then synth 2 will be evil back to synth 1 and they'll talk to each other over and over and over. So that's it. So let's get cracking with the kick. Okay, kick's pretty easy. Uh, let's stop all the clips here. Play the kick. Simple sign. The global quantization has gone to two bars. So again, as usual, open it up. Uh, let's just transpose it down. I want this one to be really short and poppy. So I'll go really low. My headphones can just pick up around 36. So we'll go there. Uh, we'll do the click trick. It's, it's the simplest way to do it. Give it a bit of a click. We'll go into this mode. Oh no, we'll go dual FM. So this one will make it white noise. Normal white noise. Very good. This one we will bring up to frequency modulate the original sign. Let's go up in course value quite a bit. Maybe six. That's pretty good. Um, we'll put an envelope on the original sign because I want it to be quite a short kick. Quite a poppy one and that of course means we need a pitch envelope and we'll put the peak up quite high maybe not that high the envelope of this is a bit too much
There we go. That's kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't think we need much else here. Maybe the white noise we could have a little bit longer. Just for a little bit longer. Maybe it's Z, like the movie The Gods Must Be Crazy. <laughs> Zai. I'm going to remember that. Uh, let's put the EQ on for the kick, of course. Roll off the low end. Bring it up. Around here. This is usually how I do it. I just kind of lower these and then raise these with a shelf. That's quite poppy. Hmm, it's got me thinking. That'll do. So I want a double dug. So in our base MIDI clip, we need to go base, chain selector. Yep, so instead of one, we want to do, do, we want number three for this one. So I just want double dug. So I'm gonna make short notes. obviously playing not a sine wave so we'll figure that out once we get the double dugs in and we'll bring those all down so what's going on here we're playing bass 3 still why are we playing bass 3 still okay I need to go up to 3 so this needs to go down an octave Make them even shorter in the actual notes. I know that kind of sounds like side trance at the moment, but with a bit of reverb or something. Can't really hear it there. We'll do something to it. Let's go into our bass four. Let's go to our sine wave. Maybe a triangle give it a pitch envelope with a really short decay bring the peak up well if you meant if you meant if you meant if you meant it you can tell I'm getting tired guys can you tell me how you made your IRC work bot work with max MSP <laughs> Not really, bro. Not now. Hit me up next week when I'm live streaming and I've got more time to uh, wander off on tangents. Um, I'll tell you I used Node.js or JavaScript. Um, that's the language I used. But um, as to how I actually built the script, I'm not going to explain it right now. Sorry. I would like to, but... I wanted it just to be a sign, but I just want to give it a little bit of punch at the start. Okay, that's all good. Let's get the EQ cranking. Let's make it nice and big. So we'll roll this off. Bring the fundamental up a bit. Maybe we'll just add like a fifth pole again with lots of Q. Find a sweet spot. Bring the Q down. Bring the gain down. And bring that overall gain up. Excellent. So, what did I say I wanted with the snare? Weird and glitchy. Well, we kind of did that with the other one, but we can make another one. Oh, I need to be on four. I 
kind of like using the noise looped in fixed mode, really low. What if we make it in subtractive mode and we copy this to all oscillators and then we change the frequency of a bunch of them. I know we're just mixing white noise with white noise, but it is looped. What about just that? How different is that to the snare we had before? Yeah, that snare is way more developed. Just a nice lo-fi snare. It'll sound good with reverb. It'll sound good with the delay. And we'll try it with some of these. gonna work. I don't think I need to EQ that snare. Let's move over to the hat. I want to speed along here. Again, what do we have? We had tambourine similar to the clap. I don't think I'm gonna be able to produce that, but we'll give it a go. Try removing the sub from the bass. Use two sub signs, one on the kick and one on the bass. It is too trancy at the moment. Okay, I gotcha. Something like this maybe. Move just a semitone. Just by doing that, it's kind of cool. Anyway, I just want to create the shell for this one. I'm getting a bit tired. Moving over to the hats. So the hats, we need to be on hat number four. So we'll put them on the off beats like so. So let's just use... Uh, White noise looped again. We'll go into subtractive mode like we did before. I'm gonna do kind of what I did to the snare. Put it on fixed mode. Bring it, bring the frequency up high though. Let's put an envelope on it. Let's not. Let's just copy all of these across to all the oscillators. We'll bring the volume down in general. Where's my spreadsheet again? So let's, let's, yeah. Let's try introducing a MIDI effect. I just want to see what this sounds like. I'm going to put an arpeggiator before this op operator. I'm just going to turn all these oscillators off for a start and we'll give this an envelope. So without the arpeggiator. If I put the arpeggiator on, turn it off sync mode and bring the rate really short. I'm gonna go trigger mode. It's kind of cool. You can change the, the gate won't do anything because it's on. 
on trigger mode. We might as well keep it in sync mode and go for like one hundred, well, one one twenty eighth notes maybe. One ninety six sounds good. So that's sending lots of notes through to the that now. So now if we turn these all back on, um and change the frequency maybe that'd be cool I might change the envelope for these maybe we can use the attack as a delay sound like a hi-hat maybe I'll make the last one real noise just to give it and we'll take it off trigger mode and put it on none go back to our normal envelope shape it's still re-triggering though I kind of like it though um Copy from oscillator C. Let's just try EQing that and just having the highs. What happens if we change the time now? size smaller duplicated across will attach the velocity to something so let me just duplicate that across four times for now oh no we'll do the velocity change let's do the velocity first and then determine what the velocity controls okay we'll keep that duplicate uh, we might as well just loop loop it Change the voices to one. Nothing. Okay, let's add the velocity to the time just for fun. Let's 
kind of cool. It's getting very uh, computery. Let's let's um because these are noise loops. Maybe if we did a pitch shift. I don't know if this is going to make any difference at all, but we might as well try. Let's uh, make the grid smaller. What have I done? I pushed shift three, which was the new command I just made. Okay. Got to be in notes mode. I'm getting quite tired, guys. I'm not too sure how much longer I'm going to be able to keep this up tonight. That's not going to make any difference, obviously. I quite like that. Let's do the left right split thing again, and we'll make this into another shelf and uh, another cutoff and just have it a bit lower, maybe a bit higher, make the left one a bit higher. I like that. It's very electronic. I kind of don't want to fuck it. I'm just going to click on the algorithms though. Definitely sounds better there. Let's bring the gain up. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to move along quickly. We may change these tomorrow. Hat number two, what did I have? A pitch LFO. I have no idea what any of these three mean. I don't know why I can have a pitch on a hi-hat. Steady velocity, noise looped. You know when you've only got a certain amount of space to write something and you write two words which mean like a paragraph and then you forget? That's what I've done. Okay, I'm just going to put in notes for a start. Sixteenths like we normally do. Duplicate, duplicate. They've all got no velocity, so we'll bring the velocity up. Still getting my hang around the modifier keys. No control, no. Alt does it. Okay. Maybe I can pitch shift these if I put it into like, uh, I'll use this mode so the white noise comes out and these three are frequency modulated. Put it in fixed mode. Now we can use the LFO on B, C, and D. And we'll do it in sync mode over maybe four bars. We'll do a saw up. And it's on re trigger, so. That saw up seems to be going down enough.
Technical Science. Four bars seems like it's too much. Try one just for fun. Bring the amount down. Alex, what's up on YouTube? I have seen you stream this morning and now you're streaming again. Are you sleeping? No, I've got to finish this. This is the last thing I'm going to finish and then I'm going to go to sleep for seven hours. I'm going to get up and I'm going to start streaming all over again all day tomorrow. I feel it's important that this is documented. I really want to have like an idea and then the end product all in one video series. It's probably taking me a lot longer because I have to talk so much and I talk so much bullshit, but... I think I like that. Let's bring the level down a little bit. All Tom, all the time. Bit too much level. Might as well open these up. Because this one's doing the envelope. This sounds alright. Really hear the white noise coming through too much. Uh, I might just bring the volume up instead. No, let's give the envelope a bit more decay. A little less volume. And we'll EQ that just because we're doing random frequency shit. Again, high pass. We'll just go up in the highs. We're gonna get it. We want to get those frequencies. Can you make the rate different? Yeah, I can. You reckon 1.5 bars would be cool? I mean, we could take it off sync mode, or we can just go low and have it. That's probably better for techno, right? Very good. I'm going to leave that there. Let's keep moving along um, so Tom can go to bed. Percussion, multi hits, moves down, long, then up. So I, was, I think what I mean here is like I make a loop which is um, not just like a one bar loop, but maybe four bars that kind of does a little bit of different things. So we're just going to percussion, make sure we've selected the right chain. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to add some G's in. Let's go inside the sine wave here. Actually, let's listen without. It'll, it'd almost sound cool if we use that noise for something, that looped noise. What about if we modulated the sine wave with the looped noise at a fixed rate, which is very low, and that kind of 
Nali area. And we could put an LFO just on the B oscillator, make it quite fast, or make it random. Or noise. It's not really going to work, is it? Re trigger. Let's do that twice. Yeah. Uh, turn the LFO off that one. Turn that one on. We'll do loop to noise again. But this time we'll make it but higher maybe or lower multi we can get multi zero Maybe let's add some harmonics in here. Catch you later, Infinite Spirals. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, the Excel list is just a kind of a rough idea of what I plan to do with all this. Like track structure, etc. Let's use a filter. With some attack. A little bit of attack. Maybe a band pass. And we'll make the filter loop to a beat. some attack. Mm. Let's try these all an octave lower. up Chintaras Street. Maybe a high pass.
too loud. We could also put the LFO on the filter. Really low. Kind of ruins it. an octave. I'm just going to have one big long note here and one big long note here and see what happens. Let's delete these notes here and duplicate this across. Why not? Let's do some filter automation. There's no rules that says we can't. Not enough high frequencies, so bring this one right up. Get the LFO off the filter. Bring the peak up here, the end point. Piercing, isn't it? It does need to be kind of percussive in some sense though. So instead of one big long note, let's um, do a bunch of really short 16 ones for a start. Let's go did it. Let's do a little pattern. These need to be a bit shorter than normal, I think. Let me just try a sine wave here. See what happens. Nope, I like the noise. Let's 
Read it. Their filter goes a little bit too high. Where is the filter? Yeah, I like not long notes. Alright, let's open up the automator and play with that and see if it's fun. That's the ultimate test. The party will have a stereo PA set up for sure. I'm just going to keep the percussion there for now. Let's move over to synth 1 and synth 2. This is the final thing in our stupid spreadsheet. So they just talk to each other. So I might just start off with a uh, synth 1. We need to change to the chain selector to track number four, which is one, two, three. Uh, yep. Yeah. And I'm just going to copy that across to there. Make sure it's the right color. So synth one is playing on track four. Let's go into a notes mode. Again, I'm just going to put in some random G's for now to start off with. We'll make it two bars long. Call and response will probably be more than two, maybe four or eight. So I'll go dut 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 dut, and then over here we'll go dut 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 dut. Like that. This we need to go synth two. Bring that up to three. So they're an octave apart. I'm gonna make them the same octave. I'm just simply gonna use a saw and a square to start off with. So we'll change the oscillator to a saw and this one will change the uh, synth four oscillator to a square. G, aren't they? Or is this... Yeah. Thank you for the follow, Laser Storm. I don't have any external hardware on this, sorry, bro. 7 inch. I mean, these are return tracks here.
So call and response. Let's um, because we've got this double dug thing. We will change this in sound. We'll just get the uh, melodic things sort of first. Let's make this four bars long. I'm going to fold the notes. So we'll make this one four bars long as well. Catch you later, John Moody. Hope you had a good watch. Thank you, 7 Inch. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Have we made the bass an A instead of G? Oh, it's because we've got that... Um, that new low F sharp. So it's, we've kind of accidentally moved into A here. Da, that doesn't really matter. Let's just duplicate that, bring it down octave. Give him a bit of life. Now these notes aren't right, they just need to be A. No, they're right, they need to be G. I just think the saw has a lot more uh, kind of quality to it. Let's make them both saw. No, I'll make this one a sine wave modulated by a 4-bit sine wave, which is something I like to do. We'll put an LFO on the destination OSCOPY volume. I don't know why these are sounding out of tune though. We've got G's. And these are... A sh well, it's an A sharp. Dun, 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 dun. We can go down to the G here, maybe. Dun, dun, dun. Let me just toy, toy with this bass here. I might just um, quickly disable these notes that we put. I'm 
Why is that sounding out of pitch? I am confused. I think I'm just getting tired and putting in wrong notes. I think I need to go down, down to the F. Down. So minus third to the seventh to the seventh. Yeah, that works. We already got an EQ8 on this synth one four track. I don't know what this one's coming from. We haven't fucked up, have we? We just had an extra EQ for some reason on that synth one track. Let's try an octave lower with everything. Catch you later, Zaital. Have a good one. Okay, this is still just like a real boring square wave. Let's modulate a square wave with something. Let's try a sign. And we'll put the LFO on the OSB mount as well. We'll make it sync mode, we'll make it six notes. Let me just loop this section here so we can hear it. I'm just going to solo it. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Uh, let me just drag the loop points out so the cooler response is nice and accurate. There's one thing I haven't mentioned actually here yet is each one of these eight tracks that I'm going to be creating for today, for tomorrow, they all have one extra sound which is over here, um, which is going to be a drone atmospheric creepy space sound. 
um, something that really evolves a lot. So uh, they're all going to have quite a bit of atmosphere to them added afterwards as well. I would say that EQ is good. We should do the same here. Starting to not see the computer properly. Maybe change this to a saw. make this a sign and that was a 4 bit we'll make this an 8 bit time why is it not in time is that an error on my behalf sound in time. Ah, oh, it's the envelope here. Or it's not. What is wrong here? I think I'm just tired. Oh no, look, something's going on weird here, look. See how we've got some orange shit happening here? I must have adjusted the... What have I done? What have I got this set at? One 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 four zero zero. One 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 four zero zero. There we go.
Okay, that is not perfect and not exactly what I want, but I am going to have to stop. The beat is cool, uh, the call and response idea is cool, the sounds are okay, they're nearly there, um, but I have to go to bed. I have to go to bed. I'm going to get up in about seven hours from now, eight hours from now, and start live streaming again. We'll polish this off and get through tracks five and six, then I'm going to have a few hours break, and then we'll do track seven and eight. And that will be tomorrow then the next day we're going to be really refining all the midi clips because at the moment it's just kick 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 snare hi-hats on the off beats i mean i don't want that i want a whole bunch of variations of things um once we've done that uh on friday night i'll probably reset this all up how i w will be performing on saturday so i'm ready to practice and uh, I might stream that as well, I'm not sure. But yeah, for now, I'm going to say goodnight. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you had uh, another good experience with this. It's a very long-winded series, this one, because I'm doing a lot of learning myself as well. But if you're sticking with it, good on you. And I hope you're not getting sick of my voice. So I'll catch you guys in the next episode.